Kunzang, renowned fortune teller, on the return of the Tibetans to their native country. I can see five snow mountains. Between the first and the fifth is a snow lion, but the Tibetan flag is visible on the smallest one. A difficult prophecy for a quick return to their native country. 100,000 Tibetans have lived in India for almost 40 years. They have achieved a modest living standard. By Indian standards, it's considerable. <laughs> the Gondon Monastery, one of the three oldest and most important universities of Tibetan Buddhism. Impressions of a monastic university. The monastery is large. Over a thousand monks live in the Ganden Chartse section. Preparation for philosophical debate. Only a few monasteries practice this as thoroughly. View of a very special school. Two hours a day. The ritual of questions and answers on Buddhist philosophy. Precise logic at the highest level. These are the three elements of perfect reasoning. The object is created and everything created is impermanent. These monks are desperate because of a conflict with the Dalai Lama. They grant us entry into this temple. At the center of the conflict, the protector deity, Dorji Shukdin. A very popular deity, mainly called upon to increase the power of meditation. It's the patron deity for whole regions of Tibet. It has been worshipped for centuries. Nothing would be more devastating to the monks than having to break the tradition. But this is precisely what the Dalai Lama has been vehemently demanding for two years. He keeps proclaiming that worshipping Dorje Shugden harms the cause of Tibet and that it endangers his own life. Neither of these points can be comprehended by the monks who are well trained in logic. An unusual scene, 
inconceivable a few years ago. Monks demonstrate against the government of the Dalai Lama. This man was present at the demonstration. Geshe Punzol Tsutrim is 64 years old and tells us that he's going through the saddest moments of his life. We had asked our teachers to initiate us into the practice of this deity. Now we have either to act against the words of these great masters or disregard the Dalai Lama's ban. I deeply regret that I could not have died a few years ago before this ban. Geshe Lopsong Dundan, 72 years old. On the one hand, we cannot speak with the Dalai Lama. On the other hand, we have no choice but to act against his words. I keep thinking, if only I were already dead. For centuries, Dorje Shugden has been revered by the greatest and most important Buddhist masters, many of whom are the most renowned masters of Tibetan history. One of them was the Dalai Lama's teacher. If the Dalai Lama thinks that all great masters were mistaken, he denies them their qualification as well. They would not be great masters. All the great masters who have worshipped this deity for the past 300 years, were they all wrong? They are wrong. Wrong? Yes. Wrong. That is all His Holiness says about the old masters. a ban that shakes many Tibetan Buddhists at the core of their faith. In just one monastery in southern India, about a thousand monks refuse to comply with the Dalai Lama's decision. Anonymous threats are spread against anyone who refuses to obey his directives. Whoever reveres Dorje Shukden must be targeted and firmly opposed. We must bring them before the public. They have to be killed. Among the targets are two young lamas. We will interrupt their lives and their activities. The disciplinary master of this monastery received the following letter during our visit. You will be dead in seven days' time. After expressing concern about the Dalai Lama's ban, this retired minister was attacked with a knife. He barely survived. Many of the 100,000 exiled Tibetans living in India today used to worship Dorje Shugden, the deity which has now been banned. The family of sculptor Lupsang Sultrim owns two cows and a small field in the southern Indian settlement. They are the only ones who still revere this deity here. Two years ago, there were 33 such families. Social pressure is extremely high within the Tibetan communities. Any contradiction of the Dalai Lama is frowned upon. Three times a day I have to go and check on my wife when she's outside grazing the cows to make sure that nobody has harmed her. We have no friends anymore. Everyone makes life difficult for us. We can't go on living like this. How many times have they thrown stones against our house? A little child sleeps inside. I don't care if they kill us parents, but I'm afraid they will harm our child. Every time I go to work, I'm scared they will kill my child or kidnap him before I get back. At meetings, they all look at me with contempt, even old friends. We live in constant fear. We trusted the Dalai Lama. If he does something like this, how far have things gone? We still live in the Tibetan community, but we don't belong there anymore. They have excluded us completely. The outskirts of Old Delhi, the Tibetan settlement. Those who are even worse off end up here.
the Dupton family was literally chased out of their residential area. About a hundred people attacked us. Had we gone out of our house, they definitely would have killed us. Fanatical followers of the Dalai Lama tried to burn down this family's house. They successfully forced these people who revere the deity now banned by the Dalai Lama to flee. They lost everything. This family are pariahs of the Tibetan community in India. They broke into our house and destroyed everything. They smashed the china, demolished the TV with stones, wrecked the fridge, all the windows. They destroyed everything. <laughs> My husband worked 35 years for all this. <laughs> Only few victims are willing to speak out against this persecution. Victims of attacks by hardline followers of the Dalai Lama find shelter in this house. It is run by an organization of adherents of this deity, Doje Shukden. In this house, they have made a small temple. The organization was founded only after the Dalai Lama did not respond to several petitions. Death threats and insults are the order of the day. I have written many letters to the government in exile of the Dalai Lama. Please, please allow us to keep relying on this deity, because I never got an answer. I even wrote to the Indian government. Jampa Yeshe, the president of this organization, has lived alone in his apartment for the past year. His family was threatened so severely that he had to send his wife and three children abroad. The following photocopied wanted poster hits him the hardest. This is my wife's name. The names of all my children are listed, including concrete information on what school they attend. These wanted posters have been posted everywhere. I assume this is meant as encouragement to kill us. We came to India because of our religion. We gave up Tibet to preserve Buddha's teachings. That's why we fled. One can't simply wipe away devotion to this deity. Our fathers and our mothers died. The Chinese killed them. Though this was terrible, it didn't strike our innermost being. This ban, however, stabs us right in our hearts. Who proclaimed this ban? Have we come to the point where we are no longer allowed to follow the teachings of the Buddha? From father to son, from generation to generation, from master to master, this pure tradition has been passed on. Why is this ban in force? Tibetan Buddhism, such a profound tradition, uh, but that, that due to the, uh, this is a way of this is a practitioner of this spirit, uh, uh, such, such practitioner, such as the practice. You see, this uh, there is danger of degenerate Tibetan Buddhism into a spirit worshiper. This is an oracle of the Tibetan deity Nechung. The Dalai Lama keeps calling on him and other oracles. It is these oracles who propose the ban to the Dalai Lama. These are the reasons for the ban given by the Dalai Lama to the Tibetan people. Propitiating Dogyal does great harm to the cause of Tibet. It also imperils the life of the Dalai Lama. May 1996. Are you aware of the potential for violence that your band contains if the Tibetans think that your life is in danger? No. No. 
he continues to bring up the subject in public discussions. A commission of his government in exile found no wrongdoing against the worshippers of this deity. Everybody, you can ask, the majority, uh, I think 99%, completely agree or follow this is my sort of uh, advice. And from this, uh, from, 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 from this side, no single record about violence. The widespread image of a happy, non-violent old Tibet is a romantic myth. The country was strictly organized hierarchically, ruled by clergy and nobility. Draconian physical punishment was customary. That too was the old Tibet. For the past 350 years, the Dalai Lamas were worldly rulers of the country. They lived in the magnificence of the palace. It was unacceptable to contradict the Dalai Lama. Private audiences were virtually unobtainable for common Tibetans. Dharamsala in northern India. Today, the Dalai Lama's seat of government in exile is at the foot of the Himalayas. His residence has become more modest, but he has formed a government with ministries and a parliament of its own. The Dalai Lama presides over it. Tupton Lunging is vice president of the parliament. Three fourth. All important decisions need a 75% majority. Major decision. Has there ever been a decision against His Holiness the Dalai Lama? No, no. Would you ever think of uh, a decision of the parliament uh, against His Holiness the Dalai Lama? No, no. The personal ritual monastery of the Dalai Lama. Dharamsala is small. Statements of the government in exile take effect immediately. After a public talk by the Dalai Lama, three nuns removed the statue of the band deity Dorje Shukdun. They destroyed it and threw the remains into this rubbish pit. The Dalai Lama's followers keep posting denunciations on public walls. They denounce the worshippers of this deity, giving name, address, and often detailed information about its followers and their whereabouts. An advertisement that appeared in the Times of Tibet and in the magazine Knowledge. Anyone who's against the Dalai Lama must be opposed without hesitation with men, money, and possessions. That is to say, by all means, including violence. Why don't you simply advise people not to worship the deity Dorshi Shugden hmm. and instruct others to be tolerant and avoid violence against those who continue to worship it? Nobody harming. Nobody harming on them. But I've seen the calls for violence no, no, in the newspaper. No, no, no. I've seen it with my own eyes. No. I think rumors. Tashi Angdu is the general secretary of the society that published the advertisement demanding ruthless action against all critics of Dalai Lama. He's a well-known politician and president of the Tibetan Regional Council. The nature of our work and the views of the government are one. We don't do anything that goes against the views of the government. He openly confirms to us that their society also threatens to use violence against those Dalai Lama critics who won't listen to them. People and deities are exactly the same. There are official deities and non-official deities. Only deities that are recognized by the government may be worshipped. Worshipping deities that are not recognized by the government is against the law. Those who wanted to continue worshipping the deity had to leave Dharamsala. Galok and his family came to India from Tibet only seven years ago. He wanted to live close to the Dalai Lama. He has been in Delhi for eight months now. Life in Dharamsala has become unbearable. He almost never leaves his little room, an emergency shelter. He does not speak Hindi, and he feels alien in Delhi outside the Tibetan community. He was a carpenter in the Norbulinka Institute in Dharamsala. I came here with the Dalai Lama in mind. Now I'm here, and I'm not allowed to attend his teachings. I keep thinking about it again and again. 
My health was weak, and is getting worse. I cannot give up the deity, nor can I give up the Dalai Lama. They say the Dalai Lama wants it this way. In Dharamsala, everyone was against me. He does not know what his family's future will be like. In India, he feels alien. <laughs> Tibet at the end of the 50s. The Dalai Lama at his doctoral exams. Shortly thereafter, he had to flee. It was the oracle of the deity Neishung that advised him to flee, writes the Dalai Lama in his autobiography. Still in a trance, the medium stumbled forward took paper and pencil and drew clearly and precisely the escape route. To find out more about the escape, a trip to the south of India. The vegetable market in Mysore. The Buddhist monks have lived in the Indian state of Karnataka for almost 40 years. No ordinary monks, they were the bodyguards of the Dalai Lama during his escape into exile in India. The monastery of Sera near Maizo. The previous abbot of this monastery accompanied the Dalai Lama. Lopsang Yesha was his assistant. He went to the oracle of Dorshe Shukten in his retreat in order to request exact instructions, says Lopsang Yeshe, the oracle of this deity that is now prohibited by the Dalai Lama. I was sent to ask the oracle. I was the only one present. The oracle said that the Chinese had prepared everything. The life of the Dalai Lama is no longer safe. You should go to the summer palace tomorrow and ask the Dalai Lama to leave the country via the southern route. Was this the advice the oracle gave? Yes, that's what the protector told me through the oracle, just like we're talking to each other. Lopsang Yeshe tells us that the oracle gave precise instructions as to how and by which route the escape should take place with the monks as his bodyguards. But the Dalai Lama does not recognize the help of this deity. That contradicts the law of truth. Actually, how can he speak like that? If it had not been for Dorje Shugden's help at that time, an escape would have been really difficult. The bodyguards left the summer palace first. Farther to the south, at a secret place, they met with the Dalai Lama troops. Normally, it's so difficult to see or meet the Dalai Lama. I thought, what a lucky moment. On the one hand, I was happy. On the other hand, I was also very sad, and tears came to my eyes. The others rode on horses, and we followed them on foot. We had to carry all sorts of things, swords, rifles, and so forth. We walked and walked, and could not keep up. The escape took 13 days. At the border, the bodyguard said goodbye to the Dalai Lama and returned to Tibet. I was very sad. Now the Dalai Lama and his great teachers are going. They're all going to India. We must return. <laughs> on the one hand, I was happy that they were in safety. But on the other hand, I was very sad when I thought of the future. We owe so much to His Holiness. I think of this always. <laughs> But nowadays it's so desperate. Now they insult us for relying on this deity. The Tibetans harass us. We've never criticized the Dalai Lama. We work so hard for him. We've never done anything against the Dalai Lama. He's our teacher. In the months to come, 
100,000 Tibetans followed the Dalai Lama into exile. Thank <laughs> you. 